Hey, welcome back to Two Stall Garage. In this episode, we're gonna fix this Milwaukee drill. Let's get right to it. Hey, if you're still watching, you made it through that intro, I appreciate it. If you guys like what we're doing here, go ahead and hit subscribe if you would like to. Thanks for hanging out today. We're gonna need to repair our one and only drill. It's a Milwaukee cordless drill. It was working, it's not anymore. Let's get this repaired. This is our one and only cordless drill that we have here in the shop. What happened is this chuck, it broke because the bolt that holds the chuck on busted off. So, one asked me how that happened. I was trying to start a transfer pump and I must have had it locked in. And when it fired off, it totally ripped it right off. It ripped the head off as well, the chuck I should say. And these threads in here are stripped. So we went ahead and ordered a brand new one right here. And we also ordered the bolt as well. But we need to get this out. So I'm going to show you how we're going to try to do that today. Let's grab this. I'm going to put that right in there. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take this little washer, we're going to put it on top or drop it in there. We're gonna give it, we'll use this. We're gonna give it a couple zaps and we're just gonna tack it on there. Once that's on, we're gonna take this little nut, it's a little metric nut. We're gonna weld that on to the washer, let it cool off just briefly because the heat actually helps and then we'll go ahead and we'll take it off. And actually this one, this one's going to be a reverse thread, so Righty Lucy, lefty tidy on this one. Hot. Don't touch it. Well, as you can see, it's gonna come right out. This is hot, by the way. All right, so there it is. Those threads, got a little bit of weld on them. That's my bad. Don't follow those steps. I'm gonna put this on the wire wheel and clean it up. There we go. So, threads are all cleaned up. Looks good. You got a little bit of marking on them, but they're gonna be fine. All right, now that we're back at the table, um, I think you guys can see this. We're gonna try to get the drill fixed. We're going to fix the drill, we're not gonna try. So we can work on these Jeep Wrangler louvers that go on the back of the hard top. Since this is our only drill, we're looking at drilling some holes through this. That'll be an upcoming video. Uh, they actually came OEM like this. They were busted, unfortunately, so we need to fix them for a family member. So we're gonna take these ball bearings and we are gonna put just a little bit of grease on them. Not a lot, they don't need a lot. Drop them right in. We're gonna drop each ball bearing down into the holes. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. There we go, and now we'll take our <clears throat> our magnets. I'm not actually sure what these are called, but one in each, one in each hole. You can clean off the top portion of the drill. Now this cost about $37. I'll put the actual price and the part numbers in the description, but we don't have a ton of budget here, so 
Uh, it was nice to be able to get the parts to fix this. And I'll list the site where we got the parts from as well. Okay, we're back at the table and full disclosure, it's a couple days later because I was trying to get this put together and I looked at the schematics that I could find for it and it didn't show this assembly and I know it's just a few pieces. Got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven pieces is all. Uh, so anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and take you through it. I had to look and figure out how to put it together. So I've got the spindle here. You can see the nuts out as we did that welding job. We got some automotive grease on this. We'll go ahead and drop it in. We're gonna take this retainer washer. Holds the bearings and the magnets in. And then we're gonna take our pressure ring or spring. We're gonna put that on. Um, and then comes the somewhat tricky part. It's gonna go this adjuster piece with the one through 16 and locked uh, thresholds or uh, gearing, if you will. And then on top of that adjuster, the gearbox adjuster, you're gonna use the adjustment ring. And I don't know exactly what it's called, forgive me please, but that's gonna go on first. And hopefully you can see this right here where you can see there's a little notch right here and then you got two notches right here. These two are facing up. This one is facing down. And what I did is I turned this all the way down to the lowest adjustment. So I think it's number two, yep. Turn it all the way down to number two. And look at the orientation that I have this, where we've got hole, hole, hole. And then right down here on our drill, we've got hole, hole, hole. And to get it to work appropriately, you wanna mount it just like this. All right, let's put this on. Make sure you keep it exactly right. Otherwise you'll have, you won't necessarily have issues, but you will have your adjustment, your gearbox adjuster be misaligned to where if you're on two, it actually shows four or if you're on five, it actually shows eight, something like that. Doesn't cause any disruption to the way the drill performs, but just so you can have an accurate adjustment. All right, so we've got everything in place. We got our three screws in, and we just wanna check If you got your drill lined up straight to you, hopefully you can see this. You wanna be right on 13. So here's 12, here's our notch in the middle of the drill, here's 14. So you wanna be right on 13. Not on 14, on 13. And then you've got your adjuster, your adjuster uh, ring, and the ring on top that retains it. So we got one, two, three bolts. Take a look at that orientation on 13. Now, you can see I'm on three. We're gonna call that good. We're at the lowest setting. We adjust all the way and we're dead locked. So I can adjust all the way back through. You can see it's accurate. So I hope that helps you guys and gals. Here's our spindle retainer. It's gonna go right there, but first we're gonna put our new chuck on. I did lube these up with some grease inside because it was really stiff. Let's get our new chuck on. Okay, you can see it's all the way down. Drop your spindle retainer in. This is a reverse thread, so you're gonna pretend like you are loosening it. So it's actually lefty tighty in this scenario. You're gonna go all the way till it stops. Don't strip this out. Done, and you know when it stops, it's not gonna go any farther. Let's get our battery on, we're all charged up. And there you guys go. Let's lock it in. 
Now it's locked. Go for number two. Yeah. Everything's working as it should. So there you go. This drill without the battery costs $99. It's the only Milwaukee drill we have, and we had to save up for a while to get that. So we spent about $38, $37, right in that area. Uh, part numbers are in the description. Um, repairing it saved us about $63. So we will take that because every dollar counts. Thanks so much for watching, I appreciate it. Next video, we're gonna be doing some blasting cleaning up some three-wheeler parts. As you can see, there's a ton of them over there. We really need to get this done. So we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye-bye.